Hey there everybody, how's it going? My name is Thamriel and welcome everybody to the Rathlos Extreme Guide for Final Fantasy XIV. This video is meant to discuss the abilities and strategies on how to take on Rathlos EX in Final Fantasy XIV. Remember, no visual telegraphs A or AOE markers will be shown throughout the battle. It actually tries to play like actual Monster Hunter World, where there are no telegraphs in that game whatsoever. You have to be able to tell the attacks by the actions and by the maneuvers of the enemy. Only one fire marker and one stack marker can be seen throughout this entire fight out of all telegraphs. Everything else must be dodged and predicted. You can't dodge through the hitbox of the Rathlos either, so you can't run through it in order to avoid some of the attacks. Only some of the attacks can be avoided by running through it, but they have to be done in between the actual animations. Three total knockouts are allowed. You can be resurrected after a knockout with full TP and mana if killed. If all three knockouts are reached, then the entire party has to restart the fight. We're gonna begin by talking about phase one, where healing is indeed allowed. Let's talk about the moves that Rathalos does. Roar does small to moderate unavoidable damage to the entire party. The tells is it will flap its wings and stay in place before it does the roar. Charge. It picks a target to charge towards. The tell is a small roar in the direction of the player. It's easy to handle if you're not too far away from the Rathlos, because you'll be able to run out of the way a lot faster. And if the further you're out away, the faster he will be trying to get to you. So it's gonna be a little bit harder to tell whether he's gonna be running to you or not. So make sure to get as close as you possibly can to Rathlos so it's easier for you and your party to dodge it in case anything happens. Front Flame and Tail Swipe It attacked on the front and the back. Its cell is it will curl up with a fire in its mouth, can be avoided at flank and very center of the hitbox. Tail Swipe Usually happens twice back to back. Its tail is it will face to the side that it will swipe towards, which means the other flank will be completely fine. Anything from the front to the rear to the flank that it's facing will be hit. Avoidance hitbox is the opposite side or down the very center of the hitbox. Flame marker targets a player with a flame marker, an AoE attack. It will damage the player and applies a fire damage over time ability. It can be a suited of the player. Fire breath AoE is onto a player. The only tell is it will snapshot to a player without a warm-up animation. Probably something that was missed out for when they first programmed the fight for Final Fantasy XIV, but it doesn't have a particular tell except it just snapshots to a player in a certain direction. When it snapshots to a player, make sure to get out of the way. It spews a fireball onto a player, knocking the back if hit. A pretty wide AoE ability. Applies a fire dot if hit. Can be a sooner. Now knowing these tactics, the best way of whether you range your melee is to stay pretty close and not be way too far away from Rathlos, especially for the charge. The charge will do a significant amount of damage and will be very critical if a non-tank is hit. Every other attack can be simply avoided, just gotta make sure you look out for the tells and move accordingly. For melee, it is best to stay at flank and hover at flank unless it does a tail swipe. At about 84 to 83% of the boss's health, adds will appear. They will target Rathlos unless aggro is generated through AoE damage, taunts, and healing. The adds will damage Rathlos with the abilities, which is a great damage boost and should probably be used in order to down Rathlos faster. There are two strategies to take on the adds themselves. You can either A, tank all them together with your tank to clear them out faster, which might be more dangerous if the tank is focusing on the adds and not Rathlos, or B, let Rathlos attacks naturally kill of the adds on their own. All the charges, tail swipes, and fire breath will indeed affect the adds. So the best strategy is to keep hovering the adds over on Rathlos and let Rathlos attacks naturally kill off the enemies. If a player is marked with a fire marker AoE, they should run over to the adds to set them on fire and make sure they can stack fire dots onto them. During the transition phase, which happens at 69% health, Rathlos will reset in the center and Garula tackles the Rathlos from the right or eastern side. Only one player has to jump up onto Rathlos' back and mash the buttons, will take periodic damage. Rest have to down Garula as fast as possible. Karul will do powerful attacks and tank busters, it is best to kill it as soon as humanely possible. Once down, all players have to hide behind Garula's dead body toward fire from Lathlos as it switches to phase 2. In phase 2, healing is not allowed. 
So at that point, your potions, max potions, are gonna be extremely useful and gonna be the only way for you to out heal any sort of damage. However, healers and players can still use Essena in this portion. No healing from spells or abilities is allowed, however. The only time you can heal is through a mega potion. It gains only a few amount of moves during phase 2, but they become extra deadly if hit, so it's best to avoid them as much as possible. Forward sweep. Knocks over players if hit and applies a poison damage over time debuff. The tell is it will snap towards a player. Can be Essenod, avoid at all costs if possible. Flame Ball, fires a flame ball at a player. Tell, snaps towards a player, like with the other attacks. In most of the tells for this phase, it would just simply snap into the player's direction. Knocks a player away and applies a flame dot. Can be Essenod. Flame Cone, fires a flame cone at players standing together. Tell snaps towards a player, knocks players away and applies flame dot, can be a sunad. Flame stack, needs to be stacked with other players, drops a flame puddle below players, applies flame DOT on all the players stacked together, will stack with every other ability. And the flame DOT will stack over damage over time. Hurts players walking into it must be stacked together with other players in order to mitigate the damage as best as possible and best to drop off the puddles close enough in order to damage Rathalos. During phase 2, Rathalos gains something called a down gauge, which needs to be filled to 100 through doing damage. Once filled, Rathalos goes down and receives increased damage compared to when it's up in the air. Must first have its tail broken. After tail is broken, will take direct damage to total health. After tail, body can be attacked when down next. It is best to use limit break during its down state, either on the tail or on the body in order to deal maximum amount of damage. Best strategy for this entire fight primarily is dodge, 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 dodge and dodge again. There are no visual AoE markers on the floor that you will see, so you have to make sure you look at Rathalos for what it's about to do and prepare yourself to move out of the way. Don't get hit. The attacks actually hurt like crap, especially in phase 2, so never ever ever try your very best, unless you're a tank, to ever ever get hit. Tanks can primarily survive at least one hit before they get screwed over again. But still, Rathalos is very unpredictable. He can sometimes chase a player continuously with multiple attacks back to back to back, and having a forward flying sweep done on a player, even a tank, again and again and again, is gonna be extremely painful for the player themselves. This fight can be cleared with a regular group of 1 tank, 2 DPS and a healer. But from my personal experience of from players testing things out, an optimal group, 3 warriors and 1 scholar. Scholar primarily there for the S and above and just to make sure that tanks are healed through in the first part. Or if you're feeling very ballsy and very confident, you can be like my group and take on the fight with 4 tanks. No seriously, 4 warriors. It is insanely efficient. We were able to farm scales back to back to back to back to back with a 4 warrior spam. Warriors are excessively good at dealing damage and mitigating damage when it comes to the flame stacks. This is probably the most fun and the most optimal build and group that I was able to find in regards to farming Rathalos. You do a decent amount of damage, especially when it comes to lining up your internal release when the enemy is down. Limit Break can be used in order to stack and in order to mitigate the flame over time stacks. You hardly have to really use potions a lot since Warrior is able to mitigate so much damage as is. So a lot of us actually were able to maybe use 2-3-4 to three to four potions per run if necessary and as needed. Obviously communication is very important in order to do this fight entirely even as 4 Warriors but we were able to mitigate it down and down this fight over and over and over again with 4 warriors. Highly recommend testing this out. Nevertheless, I hope this guide helps you out in particular of knowing what you're going to be facing against and how to avoid all the attacks. Thanks so much for watching, hope you enjoyed. My name is Thamriel, like, subscribe and as always have a great day and I'll see you on the next video of whatever I make. See ya!